All right, so we got our new Ford water pump here. There are aftermarket options. I wouldn't recommend. The aftermarket doesn't come with this proprietary blade. I'm sure they work, but I'm going to tell you in this rare case, if you can get if you can afford to get the factory pump, get the factory pump. Don't be cheap here. I mean, this is the heart of the cooling system. Uh, number 2, you do need to lubricate this o-ring. You've seen in some of my other videos, I do use Vaseline. But in this case, I'm actually going to use a little bit of assembly lube since it's going into a, a cast housing. You don't want this O-ring to rip. This is a one-time shot. If not, you got to get a new O-ring. I've been told by plumbers you could actually use KY to lubricate O-rings for seals. What? Yeah. KY jelly? KY jelly. That's, that's... Well, it is a petroleum product. <laughs> No. I looked at him, I said, so you actually sell <laughs> O-ring lubricant? He goes, oh yeah, but you could use KY. I'm like, yeah, I'll we'll just buy the real stuff. <laughs> oh, it's sad. You want to use a real conservative amount here, because you do not want this mixing with the cooling system. You just want the O-ring lubricated so when it does go back in, we don't rip, tear, I mean, it does have to get shoved back about an eight to a quarter inch once you install it, so. And by putting a little bit of grease here, I'm kind of hoping, too, to stop the electrolysis that this engine has definitely seen. Electrolysis? Electrolysis. What is that? Well, we got a steel block, and this is an aluminum pump. Now, in theory, the two metals shouldn't, uh, well, electrolysize, basically. Uh, the two metals become one, even though aluminum and steel have different properties. Uh, I looked at a couple pictures online, and yeah, Ford does have a real problem with this for whatever reason. It's kind of unfortunate. Hmm. This would be one reason why I would not buy this engine with this truck. But if you do your maintenance, and that's the key here, if you do your maintenance... Yeah. You know, this wouldn't be an issue if people don't think about changing the coolant. They'll change the oil, sure, every 3,000. But then, you know, like in this case, this gentleman left this antifreeze in here, and he could tell me he changed it once. I might call him a liar. I hate to do that to my customers, but, you know, <laughs> when it takes me three hours to clean a housing, that has not been maintained. And that's just the reality of what we do. I don't know, a lot of people don't tell us the truth, or we get half stories, or... You know, oh, no, was, I wasn't lying. It was just half life. I did it some years back. <laughs> um, hmm. Uh huh. Well, then if you did, the shop you used sloughed. <laughs> it does happen, though. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take a towel. I'm going to make sure where the coolant is going to flow that we don't have any of that extra grease there. So just go across and just spin it. Put it, putting it all in there. What's the point of putting it all on there? Well, we just want it in the important parts. All right. Um, one last order of business. We're going to put a tiny amount of Loctite on the bolts. Blue, right? Blue. Yeah, don't use red, whatever you do. That's permanent, right? Red? Yeah, red requires a source of heat to break the bond. Ah. These aren't through bolts, meaning they don't see coolant, so you don't need to use a thread sealant. But you do need to use some Loctite. The torque on these bolts is not very much. Uh, I think I was reading somewhere about 19 foot-pounds, which is about right for these short 10 mils. But you don't need to get crazy with the Loctite. Just put a line in. Kevin uses a little too much for my liking sometimes. I can make one tube last a year on, you know, 50 jobs, but with him in the beginning when I first started training with him, it was one two per one job. I'm like, no man, that, that doesn't work. Okay, so on these pumps, the weep hole is up towards the top.
you're going to have a little bit of resistance with the o-ring get your top bolt in first get it tight enough so the pump won't start walking forward on you okay now you'll see that there is a gap there that's the reason why you need some lubrication on this job I'll put the one in underneath next now if you got the pump lined up right your bolts shouldn't give you any problem coming in All right, we're going to put these all in loose. Can I see how that one got a little tough on me there? We're just a little off alignment. So we'll leave that one there for now. Get our last bolt in. Right come down so you can see it. These bolts you should not have to force in if your pump is lined correctly. And the way that Ford did it, it's three on the top, one on the bottom, they do that so you can't get the clocking wrong. Alright, so here's the crucial step. We're going to turn these very little and slowly walk this pump in. I don't know, I've watched a couple guys do this with a air hammer or air ratchet or electric ratchet for that matter, impact. I don't know if I would do that with an O-ring. Okay, Just do a little bit of time to walk that O-ring in. Now you can see the pump is going forward. And see if this one will finally walk in. Okay, you see in there the pump walked in. We'll go to this one that was a little tight. Alright, you see now how this one got loose. Now we're in perfect alignment. Now see how this one tightened up on me a little bit. And this is why you don't just tighten one down then the rest later. You slowly walk this pump in. How does that keep it? Power strain pump. Okay, bottom one is about two pounds. You want to get these all to about an even torque before you take the torque wrench. And yes, you're going to need a torque wrench for this. Okay, so now we got our pre-torque done. Now we'll get our torque wrench out. Okay, first pass, we're going to go to about 120 inch-pounds. Okay. It's 228 inch-pounds or 19 foot-pounds. You can see how the bottom one is pretty loose there. Okay, now we'll go to our final of 228 inch pounds. Okay, we'll start at the top. Go to the bottom.
All right, I'm going to grab another torque wrench, verify that it is 19 foot pounds. And these type of jobs, I like to double verify. Uh, yeah. Alright, one more time. One more time, she's like, like three. Yeah, well, can't be too safe. I can't imagine you picked for a fourth time. I have. Especially on these light torque bolts. That key with water pumps is everything must be equal. Well, is it? It is equal. Well, okay, go. now on a Ford pump, they do have a rubber collet here you do have to take off. thought that would come off a little bit easier. No. <laughs> it's a Ford. <laughs> there we go. Well. Alright, well this concludes the installation of the water pump. We're going to wait to put the fan on. Uh, we got to change the lower hose. We got to get the reserve tank out of the way and change the thermostat. So I'm trying to hope we can get it all done in part four, but this might be a five parter because we still haven't started it up and blood the system yet. So stay tuned, that one's coming, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.